Today's video is brought to you by Touring Plans Travel Agency. Be sure to check them out for all of your traveling needs. Link in the description box below. So I just checked in, everything went super smooth. Well, there were of course long lines, but that's to be expected whenever you're getting on a ship. Now, I was worried because my last cruise that I got off today, actually Bahamas Paradise Grand Classica, they had a big issue with my birth certificate, but thankfully this time Royal Caribbean, I had no problems at all. So now, no nothing to do but board the ship. I'm so excited. I, I gotta be honest with you. No offense to Bahamas Paradise, but going from a ship that was built in 1991 to this ship now, oh, oh this is gonna be fun. Here we go. And just like that, we are on board the Freedom of the Seas. Since I'm on board, I can take my mask off. No, this is weird boarding the ship. This is the first time I boarded a ship where we were just kind of like outside as soon as we got across the gangway. We are now inside Freedom of the Seas. Oh yeah, I'm ready to do some exploring. No, you know what? I got to be responsible. We'll do our mustard drill first. Now where is B11? Look at this amazing view. Miami, we are back. I think this is where we check in. Mustard drill is complete. Really simple process. They go over to where I was, B11. Everybody has different muster stations. They check us in via our boarding pass. And then after that, they have us watch a little quick instructional video. And after that, we are free to roam around as we see fit. But I think I'm gonna go straight to my room and check it out first. By the way, while I'm going to my room, just to give you guys a little information about Freedom of the Seas. The ship was built back in 2006. Since then, it has gone through a couple refurbishments. The last one was back in 2019, right before the pandemic. Now, this ship at the time when it was built in 2006 was the largest cruise ship on planet Earth. And well, we see how that went later on in today's time. We had Symphony of the Seas, and then this year I was on the inaugural sailing for Wonder of the Seas, which is now the world's largest cruise ship. Well, looks like I got a little ways to walk. I'm all the way in the aft of the ship and uh, have to go forward, I guess. We'll see you in a minute. Finally, we made it. Let's check out the room. Ah. Yeah, guys, I got an interior this time around, but this is a Royal Promenade view or something. I don't know the, the proper name. Let's see what we're working with here. Ah, interesting. You know, I was thinking about booking one of these when I was on Wonder, and now I finally have it. This is cool. If you want me to do a room tour, let me know. I've already done plenty of rooms similar to this, so uh, just let me know. Look, the casino. Wow, it actually looks like a pretty decent size. Look at all that money. Oh, the things that I would do if I had that much money. Got Playmaker smack dab middle of the ship right here outside of the casino. You know, I, I still haven't ate here yet. I heard the burgers and the food here is pretty good. I remind myself to do that this cruise. What is this? It's an interesting area. Oh, it's just Boleros. It's crazy how they change things up in so many ways on different ships. Oh, look at this. We got the Royal Promenade. Sorrentos. I know a lot of people don't like Sorrentos, but for me, it, it does the job, especially when you're hungry late at night. I'll be honest with you, I, I kind of like the setup overall for this particular ship. It's not bad, but I, I definitely got to do a little bit more exploring, of course. Shore X, Meat Market, Next Cruise. I got to go in there at some point. Oh, look at this. This is cool. This little bridge right next to guest services. And now I get to deal with everyone's worst fear ever. Having to go to guest services on embarkation day, it's horrible. Before we go get some food, we'll check out the Lido deck. I just wanna show you guys what's on each floor. And I'm sure throughout the cruise, at some point, I'll check out all of these decks. We are deck 11. Let's see what they got up here. Ah, not bad, not bad. Let's check out the fitness center. I hope they got some place where I can practice. I gotta get back in shape. ASAP. Oh, wow. Oh yeah. Well, I know where I'm coming for practice. Oh yeah. Perfect. By the way, guys, little fact for you. They used to have a boxing gym in here. Right? I believe it was over in this general area. That would make the most sense, but they, they scrapped it years ago. Let's get some food. Check out the wind jammer. This is the third wind jammer that I've been to on board a Royal Caribbean ship. Oh, they got chops literally right inside the Windjammers on this one. Let's see what we're gonna eat. Oh, by the way, if you guys see the ladles are now and the tongs are now facing us, it is back to self-serve. So you know what that means. 
Watch everybody's hands before they grab the ladle. I'm so hungry, I can't even think right now. Sorry, baby. I'm about to tear this food up. So I don't know if I've been getting spoiled on both Wonder and Odyssey of the Seas, but it seems like here at this Windjammer, they don't really have a big selection, at least on Embarkation Day. So keep in mind, Embarkation Day. But I mean, I got some paella, some uh, it's like butter chicken with rice and a sandwich, but there's like there's no pizza. There's not a really big selection or variety at this Windjammer. Let me know, guys. Maybe I'm going crazy. I don't know. I also haven't slept in like 24 hours and I'm starving. So, yeah. I do feel a little bit better now that I ate. So, let's go check out more of the ship. So, Giovanni's is also here in the Windjammer. So, you got Giovanni's and then directly across from Giovanni's, you got Chop Steakhouse. So, in a minute, I'm going to show you guys something that you will not be able to do on most cruise ships. It's pretty cool. So, we had to go all the way down the back to deck four. And then we're going to go back up. Get the view of Miami. Beautiful. Up we go. I hope we're going the right way. Oh yeah, we're definitely going the right way. Check this out. So Freedom of the Seas is one of the few ships that allows you to go as a passenger to the helipad. Meaning the very, very front of the ship. How cool is this? Give you guys a little scan around so you can see. Oh yeah, I'm probably going to spend a decent amount of time up here. Perfect views. And of course you want to do like a, a Jack and Rose moment. Boom. There you have it. Free Mother Sea is one of the few ships you can do it on. Okay, so now that I've seen a lot of stuff on the ship so far, not everything, obviously it's a big ship. Used to be one of the largest in the world, remember? Uh, let's go to my room. We're gonna have to have a little bit of a talk. Give me a second, let me sit this down here. So I'm gonna try to figure out how to say this without offending anybody. Well, the loyal to royal crowd in particular. But I realized that there is no way that I cannot do that. But I'm going to say what I'm going to say. And uh, you, you guys take it or leave it. So here's the deal. Over the past month and some change, I have now been on three Royal Caribbean ships that were built in different years on three different classes. I've been on the largest cruise ship on planet Earth, Royal Caribbean Wonder of the Seas. I was on the inaugural sailing for that one. And that was my first Royal Caribbean ship that I've ever been on as a passenger in sailing. I had been on Spectrum of the Seas. I had a friend that was working on board the ship back when I was working for NCL. I got to walk on the ship as a guest for like a couple hours, so I don't really count that. Next, I was on Odyssey of the Seas just about a week and some change ago. And I really did enjoy the ship. That was a Quantum class ship. Wonder was Oasis class ship. And now here I am on Freedom of the Seas. Now, I want to make it very clear. This is no jab at Freedom of the Seas or any of the ships. They're very beautiful ships. They're very nice ships. I like the variety that's available on these ships. However, I can never for the life of me understand how somebody can exclusively cruise Royal Caribbean and nothing else. Now, one thing I've noticed about, let's say, the people that are loyal to Royal is it is typically people that have never cruised with another cruise line, like uh, what's one you guys like to talk about the most, Carnival. You go, if anything, on an older Carnival ship, like eons ago, years ago, and then you never touch Carnival, NCL, Hall in America, any of these lines ever again, and you stick to Royal Caribbean. Now, I like the ships, like I said, very beautiful, but... It's the same theme. Do you not get tired of, of going and seeing the same orange tropical palm tree things that are over on the little deck? Like, I, I'm, I, I like a local fresh. I think it's, it's delicious. I think it's great. Giovanni's, eh, not my favorite place. Sorrento's does the job, especially after you've had a couple drinks in the middle of the night. What I'm trying to say is, how can people not explore a little bit between other cruise lines? Now, given there are factors to the equation in my situation in particular, well, I cruise a lot, and like I said, I've been with three different ships within the Royal Caribbean fleet, three different classes within the past month. That's not normal for your average Joe. However, I would assume if you look at things kind of over time, it kind of equals out. If somebody only exclusively cruises with Royal Caribbean, you factor in, let's say, a couple years, right? Uh, maybe three years, four years, five years, and you cruise religiously once or twice a year with Royal Caribbean. You cannot tell me that you do not get even a little tired. I, I get it. Maybe you want to get those crowning anchor points in and, you know, you want to be able to, to get the, 
junior suite, the suite, whatever it is, you want that pinnacle ranking on board the ship. I'm just gonna leave off with this. Uh, well, a couple things actually. I implore all of you to shop around, right? It, just because you had an amazing experience with Royal Caribbean, and you know, maybe you'll dabble into, let's say, Celebrity, their sister company that's slightly a step above. I encourage all of you to go check out maybe Princess, um, Carnival. If you're going to sell Carnival, I always encourage people that maybe you've had a bad experience with Carnival. Go check out their newer XL class ship. So go check out, of course, the Carnival Mardi Gras, my favorite cruise ship. Go check out the Carnival Celebration. You never know. You might end up actually liking some of these ships and maybe you had a bad first impression. I, for one, completely and wholeheartedly agree that you can judge a cruise ship and an experience with a particular cruise line based off of one cruise. Why? Because it's nothing to sneeze at when you're talking about price. When you got somebody that's paying upwards of hundreds of dollars to thousands of dollars, some people paying even tens of thousands of dollars, you're not going to just taste test something and then say, oh, it was bad. I'm going to go ahead and try it again. I completely understand on that part. However, if you guys are going to outright never sail with another line again, that's where my whole conundrum is. Now, for tonight, just so I can kind of get an idea and a real scope as a, a guest, a passenger for a change, usually I'm walking around with my camera and recording. Here on Freedom of the Seas, I'm going to kind of just hang out tonight. This is going to be the end of this video here because I want to get a full effect of the nightlife, the evening time here on Freedom of the Seas and just honestly enjoy myself. But like I said, I encourage all of you, maybe check out another line. You never know. You might find out that that's now your new favorite line, something of that nature. Anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap this video up. I know that was kind of like a, a little rant, but I am curious. Let me know in the comment section below. Why do you only cruise Royal Caribbean if you're part of the loyal to Royal crowd? And I think you guys are great, but uh, maybe you are exclusively Carnival. Let me know in the comment section. Why do you guys do this? Because it's just honestly... Uh, not really my cup of tea to do. I can never be loyal to one particular cruise line because there are so many different experiences for you to enjoy. Anyway, guys, I'm talking too much. It's my first day on Royal Caribbean's Free Mother Seas. On your way out, of course, hit that like button. If there's anything that I should see while I'm here on board this ship, please let me know in the comment section below. I appreciate all of you. I love all of you. Also, make sure you check out Touring Plans Travel Agency. They are the official sponsor of this YouTube channel, The Ship Life, and I couldn't be more grateful since they are paying for this cruise that I'm currently taking, 100% of it. Now, think about it. If they're willing to help little old crazy me out, what do you think they can do for all of you? You want to book a cruise? You want to book a resort? You want to go to a theme park like Disney or Universal? They got your back, and they have so many tools and technology that can give you that little oomph of comfort, peace of mind, and Overall, just the best experience possible. Link will be in the description box below and pinned in the comment section. I love all you guys. I'll see you later. Take it easy.